Welcome back, everybody, to the Selling with Love podcast. It's your host, Jason Mark Campbell. I'm here with Teal Swan. And for those of you who have been followers of the show for such a long time, you know, I've had Teal on the show many times. We've also had some interviews back in my time when I was at Mind Valley. And personally, I've been such a big fan of her work. I've, uh, I've discovered her through a friend that uh, while I was going through a dark time, dealing with some relationship issues, um, it was just one of those YouTube videos that was shared. And it was actually an interview uh, that you had done with Wisdom from the North. So I want to give a shout out there. And the, t- the chain of events that made it so that I'm here in your house and we're doing again this interview in person is, is actually quite interesting because it started from being referred to that interview, which was actually watched while I was in Oslo in Norway. Yep. And I realized that that person's based in that town. So I was like, I'm going to reach out to her and we had coffee. And then I think it led us to connect even further where I brought you onto the Maya Valley platform. We ended up doing an interview together and I always stayed in touch with your business manager. And uh, well, I guess now it's been like five months we're working together. I have to say one of the craziest things that have happened through this process. So as we work closer together, now, I've had the glimpse into what happens behind the scenes of running a business that is in the mission of raising consciousness, helping mental health in the spiritual space. And there's a lot of moving parts that I think a lot of people don't see, don't appreciate. And uh, what I wanted to do in the conversation today is just kind of walk you through different parts of the journey, see what are the things that you might never have thought about. And even coming back from one of your live events, I've seen the kind of work you've done with people. And as someone who's speaking about selling and selling with love, someone asked you a business question and what you answered was just so on point. And I was like, okay, I need to hear more about these business insights because it's you're very in tune with what everybody needs. Uh, but before we go to that, there's a lot of art around us. And one thing that for most people ask, like recognize you from the Ask Teal like video series on YouTube, you have frequency paintings, which are part of your craft and your art. And we have a few of them here. And I'd love for you to talk about like what that is, how did that start and uh, and what does it serve? Well, we got to walk out on an esoteric limb for this one because I was born seeing the world much differently than other people do. Um, you could think about coming into this physical time space reality, like plugging into a computer game with an avatar, but you are the avatar. So by plugging into this game, you are forgetting all the rest of you, i.e. using this analogy, the part of you that's sitting on the couch playing the game, right? I was unable to do that, like quite literally not able to. And because I couldn't plug into the mainframe essentially and plug into that game, um, I'm obviously looking at different things that other people are looking at. It's not like a gift where you develop it and then you can see it if you want to. I have a, a disability when it comes to not seeing this kind of stuff. So what you're looking at here is that energy is really, I should say it's like the the precursor for everything that is manifested. And energy has these patterns, more or less complex patterns. So I'm able to see these patterns in the energy fields. And it's how I identify, say, whether somebody's feeling one emotion or another emotion as I'm watching a different color or I'm watching a different pattern and I'm watching a different texture. So I, I had this epiphany one day. What if I took these like very geometric sort of pre-manifestational patterns, which are very strong frequencies, and I painted them and they served as like an allopathic remedy for people, meaning that let's say that you've got the frequency of something like joy and you put it in your living space or you wear it as clothing. What's happening here is you're forcing the law of entrainment in this universe to make it so that these two patterns match. Now, it's highly likely, much more likely, with a very strong frequency, that that entrainment is going to work in favor of the frequency itself. So it's less likely that if I bring one of these frequencies into the space with somebody, let's say it's the frequency of joy, into the space with somebody who's depressed, that this frequency is going to go and all of a sudden be in depression. The opposite is what's going to happen. So that's what these are, essentially. They are remedies in the form of energy art. And what's the energy that we have between us? This is about finding out your own truth. And behind us? This is an expansion grid. So both of these are grids. As opposed to, like, if you look at a frequency like joy, that's something that spontaneously occurs. Some of these that I paint are extraterrestrial patterns, light frequency patterns that they use to heal things. And so they're much more intentional, right? It's it's like you've got a being who understands vibrational reality. They are intentionally creating vibrations for the specific purpose of causing healing. And the reason I want to call attention to that is for 
anybody that's listening in, I'm hoping that these are going to be some of the things you get to take also from the conversation we have here. So we have a kind of frame and an intention for it. There's a part of me that makes me realize that when you look at business, and I feel this is a common frustration, especially in the spiritual space, the whole concept of having to build a business around the fact that you're trying to raise consciousness, you're trying to make an impact in the world. It's almost like, it feels like in the way of the true path you want to walk, but it's kind of a necessary path that we need to walk in this space reality. And I wonder if that's a common struggle you had ever, ever since the beginning, you've kind of got into this place where you, you've had your YouTube videos, you've built a kind of platform around it. Is that something that's been a constant struggle or a constant thing that's in the way? Or do you under, like, do you embrace it? What's your attitude towards it? I embrace it. I, I see the business element of the spiritual mission that I'm on as being something that feeds into what it is that I'm trying to do here. It doesn't seem like it's a takeaway necessarily or has to be a takeaway necessarily. It feels more like a source that is putting energy into it. My conundrum starts when I'm expected to wear multiple hats. So it wasn't until my business started to really scale that it started to be, wait a minute, if I'm doing any of this other business stuff, then I can't actually focus on my craft. Now, anybody who is truly excellent at what they do, specifically if what they do is you know, some kind of art form, whether that's surgery or whether that's you know, being able to play violin so well that it's insane, you know, anybody who's really got a specific mastery, it's almost like you, you marry that thing, you pour so much energy into that thing and you just want to do better, 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 better and create more in that sphere. So if you're having to all of a sudden come over and put a hat on like a business hat and you're having to think about the practical ways of how to market something, that pulls you away from what it is that you came down here to do. So the difficult part for me has been trying to put together a team that can you know, do this side of it so as to feed energy into what I'm doing to allow me to just not have anything to do with that so that I can just get better, 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 better and produce more and more and more and more. So the attitude that I like my own team to take is, you know, we've got Teal Swan here for a limited amount of time on this earth. We want to make it so that she can create as much as possible in that time frame. That means I've, all the balls need to be taken off as much as possible. And I am not going to say that I found a sweet spot yet. <laughs> What I've witnessed for a lot of the clients that I work with, especially those that have big sales blocks, because I've, I've seen the two types of people that get into this industry. Some that are, they have a craft, they have a gift uh, and a passion for actually making a difference. But the whole marketing and business side is completely untrained and they have a lot of struggle. And it's like, it feels like they can't pierce through, they can't have anybody hear them. But then on the flip side, I've seen the ones that are very business and marketing proficient they can understand that there's a need for this kind of teachings and they're the ones who go out and succeed and build a big platform. I dislike that immensely, just saying. So you know. Tell me more about that. It is a personal pet peeve of mine because in this line of work, obviously, I, I have this major value for excellence of craft. And so there's a great many people who have incredible things to offer. I mean, really genuinely incredible things to offer. And because they don't excel at this business element, or I would even say more so the social media element of it, they're not getting the attention they they deserve in that craft. Whereas I'm seeing people who have this completely different skill of business, completely different skill of marketing, completely different skill of social media being like, well, I can do this for other people. Why not just put myself there? The answer is because because the, the people you need to put there are the people who really have that level of excellence. My ideal situation would be the people who have those skills would really be trying to help the people who don't have those skills. But right now we live in, a, in an era where people are wanting as much significance as possible. So if somebody with incredible marketing skills wants the significance, they're going to put themselves there instead of somebody else who, quite frankly, deserves it. It's a, it's a pet peeve for many of us in this field, by the way. <laughs> it's a pet peeve for a lot of people in every field, to be honest. Like one of the reasons why I, I got you know, passionate about selling with love was because I have a mission statement, which is not like the clean one that you put on the website, but it's like my my visceral one that I'm like, this is why I do it, is I'm tired of seeing douchebag marketers and salespeople that use those techniques to take advantage of people. And I've always wanted to bring a framework so that the people who actually give a, actually have the tools so that they can go do that and actually get their message heard. So there's not even a marketplace for the people that aren't excellent at their craft. But you've obviously rose into a level that most people could only dream of. 
And I'd love for us to go back to kind of the beginning because you are someone that has the craft, but you've been able to pierce with, I believe YouTube was the first platform that really took off for gaining awareness and traction. And I'd love to go back to the beginning. Like what decisions did you make that actually made you pierce through? Were you conscious that you're like, I'm going all in on YouTube? Was it more like, was it very intentional? Was it testing? I, I want to go back to what level were you at when you started? Okay. Because in your the, result was very different. I wasn't thinking at all about YouTube. I wasn't thinking about the internet. I mean, this is going to date me here, but <laughs> I, I like grew up in this era where it was just insane. I was already out of high school, by the way, when I got my first email address. So the first go-to in your head when you're building a company is not online. Like that wasn't a thought. You know, I went from seeing people just one-on-one -on -one as mostly a medical intuitive who just ended up helping people much more with emotional and mental dynamics than I did physical dynamics. Um, I went from doing that to like, how do I reach people? Oh, a book. You know, because like in my era, that's what you did, um, especially in this field. So I wrote a book and people liked that book, but what it was very much by accident. I ran into a bunch of people who were a lot younger than me, actually. Um, and a lot of them were just talking about this YouTube thing. And it was back in the day when YouTube was a place for just party tricks. It was just like weird stuff, family home videos. Oh, look, there's a way that we can, you know, snapshot ourselves on Halloween and send it to our grandma somewhere else. And of course, you can't open the email. But I was looking through some of those videos and laughing at at them and thinking to myself, wait a minute, people can upload things here. I could upload things here. And it was very much like risky. I felt like it was, I remembered distinctly that feeling that it was going to be a major risk, whether I was just going to annoy people and get like three views because I, what I'm putting out there is informational rather than putting stuff out there that is humorous or, you know, entertaining in some way. But I was like, I'm just going to take the risk. So I started taking my clients that I had at the time and getting them to submit questions. That's how the whole thing started, like, and asked Teal because I was like, I don't know what people want to know. I mean, I definitely knew I, I was having an interaction with, like, how much people didn't know about the greater universe and about the way that things work. Things I knew innately. So I was like, all right, I, I have things that I can share with the world that definitely would benefit people to know. But there was still this big gap between what is it they want to know, though, because there's a difference between what I wish people would know and what people want to know, I've noticed. So when they were submitting these questions, I just was like, all right, I'm going to take a question and I'm going to do a video to answer a question a week, right? And I, it was literally like wildfire, completely unexpected. And like overnight, just bam, people were like, whoa, 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 this is cool. You know, all of a sudden I've got like the first offer to do a radio show ever. You know, I remember I was really nervous for that one. I was 10 times more nervous, ironically, for the radio show than I was for the first time I ever stepped on stage. So I did, I, you know, it was just more and more and more and more offers. And then it turned to the, you know, it was, we were starting to see all the comments from people around the whole world. You know, it's like, now it's like, you got to come talk in Australia. You have to come to Europe. You know, and it, I'm telling you, it was literally like overnight. It was a wildfire on a level that none of us were prepared for. All of a sudden, there was no way to straddle sort of doing the full-time mommy thing and, you know, trying to do this business at the same time. And so you're faced with this. You have to grow very fast and you have to adapt very fast. And I'm sorry, Teal, but your life is around the world that quick. I'm like, I hate airplanes. You know, if you've, if I've watched a lot of documentaries, right, that talk about, you know, maybe the more business ones, which are like the guys are in the garage. They build like the first computer. Oh, Right. And then what, what's really crazy in every one of them, I, and I, I'm picking on that one because I watched it recently and I went through the book, but there's always like that innate struggle to figuring out what you just, you just went through. And I think for a lot of people, like that's an exciting part of the story. Like, wow. Okay. She even had to figure it out. I will just draw attention for everybody listening. If you notice the first thing she was doing was actually practicing the craft one-on-one -on -one building experience. And like, to me for, for, a lot of people that are impatient, they're like, I just want to get to this. I just want to be, why is nobody seeing, but I haven't actually put in the work. And uh, I'll hold my point and kind of expand on this because I feel like this is the one I always want to stretch on, but how much work needs to be put into doing the work with individuals before you actually go and make a step like this? Oh my gosh, I don't know how to quantify that. Right. Um, I will say though, that working with individuals gives you, serves as like a snapshot for what you're going to run into in a bigger way when you're working with groups, things like that. Um, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't have an answer to that. I don't feel like there's this perfect number, you know, or this perfect level of dedication to doing individual work first. Then let me ask you this way. Okay. Did you have a feeling at some point that you're like, now I'm ready? No. No, it was, it was literally that I was working with people one-on-one -on -one and let's, you know, I would have a, a person in front of me and I would be like, well, you understand why you have stomach issues. The reason that you have stomach issues is because of this horribly poor self-esteem. Why do we have horribly poor self-esteem? Because back in childhood, this is the pattern. Do you notice that pattern in your current relationship? Oh my God, yes. It was like, all of a sudden I got, whoa, wait, wait, wait. People don't even see this? And it, like I started to panic because it was like, oh, no, like if the whole rest of the world, th we're suffering this badly and people don't understand that one pattern that for me is so it's just like, what color paint is that? And you'd be like pink. I, that's how it is for me. Right. So I, st I actually started to get afraid of the amount of information that people were lacking and what that meant. The implication for not only personal suffering, but the patterns that would be carried out in the world and then it was an automatic calling. It's like, I, I have to get this information to more people then. It's not a joke. It's not about, but that's the thing. It wasn't about me needing success and needing significance and needing, you know what I mean? I wasn't very much, I was not going out there, you know, don't get me wrong. I enjoy, you know, significance, but it's like, I wasn't going out there for the purpose of like pulling significance from the people. It wasn't about what I wanted to take. And that's what I noticed as being, as being the major difference between some of us in this field and the rest of us in this field. It's like a lot of people who get into this, they are, they're only thinking about stuff that's completely unrelated to the craft itself. They're thinking about, you know, this is how I'm going to gain significance. This is how I'm going to be relevant. This is how I'm going to make a lot of money. And all of those things are a taking from the public. When I first came into this, and this is what I attribute the majority of my success to, it was like, I, I, I can't sit here and watch this. I cannot sit here and watch the amount that people are suffering not knowing the information like this. I have to give them the information. And it was like, <laughs> so you just, it was like this flow, just constant flow out towards the people. And I, I, I genuinely believe people felt that. They felt the fact that it was like this stream of, go ahead, take it. And when you do that, people are like, oh, God, yes. Mm, there, there's a couple of things I, I, I picked up on that. One is uh, for a lot of people, they actually don't realize what they know is actually a perspective that most people don't actually, actually acknowledge. And that's one that I even struggle with because sometimes I'll go and talk about sales or business and I'll be like, no, this is, I know this with you personally. Well, you, <laughs> you do this with me all the time. You're like, it's so easy. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's fascinating because we're blind to our own excellence. Excellence. Yes. And I think that's a shame because then you're just like, oh, okay, I need to become this epic man. I, I've seen you work with somebody on stage, uh, it was two days ago, I was at the event in LA and there was a gentleman that didn't understand about how his own authenticity could be the gift that he could provide. And so it, it, to me, if it was my prescription, I would be telling people the reason you go talk to people is get you can get that kind of feedback loop. And I feel like that's a pretty good place to start for it's, someone who's looking for finding what their excellence is. It is, yeah. The second thing I picked up on is you were able to provide... Uh, this information without having this inner sense of neediness from people, right? And I find that in in the space of spirituality, a lot of times there's not necessarily like affluence that is supporting the individual. So there's a lot of like, oh, but I I, I need to go into this all in, and I need to to make money now. I oh, like, I would yeah, just so. like to get this out of the way. The spiritual field is the worst place to make money in the universe. That's what people don't get. They're seeing people like me, and they're seeing you know other people who are like the. I'm talking the top of the top of the top. This is more competitive and more difficult to make it than any sports I have ever played in. And I did that professionally. So like a lot of people are getting in and they're seeing us and they're, they're not understanding what goes behind it. And they're like, oh, this is just going to be easy. And I'm going to make a lot of money. No, you're not. No, you're not. This is not a good place if you want to make money. Period. The end. Some people are able to make money doing this, but like, no. That's a bubble pop for a lot of people. So does that actually allow us to filter out for people that are coming in with the wrong intentions? It should. It should, but I mean, it's a full-blown truth. Yeah. I find that there's an entire industry that has kind of carved itself outside of personal growth and spirituality, which is a lot about manifesting financial gain. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that are the most successful financially. 
it feels sometimes a little perverted. I see the value in it. There's there's definitely, what's the expression? Don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. But there's always a little sense of perversion in it as well. How do you relate to those? I, I want to know the perversion, like the perversion that you feel. Well, it's like if you want to live an amazing life in abundance like I do, mm -hmm. then if you go through my 12-step program to learn about the mindset of abundance, then you will have that success. And their success is entirely funded by the people taking into oh, yeah, yeah. that okay, product, I get it. right? So it's that loop itself that yeah, just perverts that, you. And, and I'm the guy who's about selling it. And like, I'm about like, I, I want people to open their mind to what abundance is possible. But there's a, there's almost like the water's not fully clean. And I, I, I sometimes struggle with that. I know what you mean. Yeah, I actually struggle with it also. Well, I've had a chance to work on your business. <laughs> okay. And it's so funny because like we start, we, you start, and this is where values become really important when you're working with individual and understanding their core drive. And for you, I know it's all about like mental health, you know, reform awareness, helping those that might not be supported in the system. We're talking about raising consciousness, God damn it, like at a crisis level that we need to wake the F up. And so then it, it steers a lot of the business decisions. But if it's, if you're just going from a place of greed, I'm like, okay, Teal, let's create the manifest your fame and success on all platforms using it. And we don't go there because it's not in alignment. And when it comes to discovering these kinds of values, you already spoke about excellence. Um, I'd love to share a bit more because we talked a lot about this and how it ends up being guiding principles. What are some of the values that drive you on top of excellence that we've already shared? Mastery, integrity, uh, purpose definitely drives me. Innovation is something that really drives me. Yeah, I mean, to understand a lot of the values that drive me, you just got to think about a master chef or something like that. I'm, I'm striving for perfection craft in a way, and it's not perfection of craft unless there's a high degree of integrity with it, right? Yeah, with my values, I drive everyone around me. <laughs> you know the image that just came into my head? Um, who's that guy that runs the show Hell's Kitchen? Is it Ramsey? Yeah. yeah okay. The intensity. Now he's really mean. You're not mean. Like you're, but you're very intense. And I'm it's, very intense, it's, yeah. it's the intensity about like, guys, we're, we're on a mission here. We can't go halfway. That I think is probably one of the key drivers that has brought you to that level of success where most people are very comfortable and they don't want to go into the discomfort side of the business. Cause if I'm looking from the outside, it's like, oh my God, like you said, I'm going to make some YouTube videos. This is so easy and I'm going to be famous. There's a double-edged sword, or at least a, another side of the coin. I still am holding one of the original questions from earlier, but with that, um, what are some of the truths that people should know if they're going on this pursuit that it's not all sunshine and rainbow and you need that intensity as well? Why do people need the intensity when it comes to doing that work? Those are like two different questions. Like, well, how, how is this not all sunshine, gums, or crabs and roses? Like a different question than how come you, people need can, um, intensity? Well, I'd rather be more focused on what are some of the things people don't see on the path of, of success that they should be realizing? Nobody sees how hard it is. No matter what. I, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what field they're looking to get into or what type of success it is they're looking for. People underestimate how difficult it's going to be based off of watching the people that are already there. Also, it's like you're, you, are, you are going to run into blockages that make you question anything you're doing it's, and the higher you aim the worse it gets so you're going to be running into those moments where it's like you're really going to continue down this road are you really what's your value what's your value now how about if you lose everyone and it's just going to keep amplifying 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 people sort of expect i'm going to do this and then it's just going to be open doors you know there is that expectation that it's like okay if only i get this number of followers then all the deals and I'll be on every podcast and I'll have everything come to me so easy. No, but it doesn't work that way. I, it's like I almost wish, I almost wish we could. What I'm sitting with here is this, you know, personal experience and obviously knowing a lot of other people in this field and what they experienced. And, and it's like I'm trying to rectify so many years of intense, incredible experiences and pain that people cannot fathom. And I, it's like I, I've got, there's so much of it. I don't even know what to draw from to be like, this is the reality. This is the reality. This is the reality. I can tell you one of the sunshine gumdrops and roses things, which shocked me the most when I came into this. I think when we come into, especially the spiritual field and the, the self-growth space, there's this expectation that 
we're all going to get along because we all have the same mission. Mm -hmm. And I am telling you, this is more competitive than professional sports was ever competitive. And this is like, I like to tell people, these people are not going to be your friends. They will be few and far between. This is where the devil sleeps is in the spiritual field. The posturing, the egos are larger here. They're the worst because I don't have one, you know. Mm -hmm. It is violent. It is vicious. Those other people are not going to be your friends. It's pretty difficult, actually, to form friendships within within the field. I've worked in this industry for a while. I've witnessed a lot of these different personalities and egos. Um, there's there's always a sense of like bartering. There's a like if you're doing business, people want something from you and they have something to offer. So there's uh, there's always an exchange. I'm afraid to call it on a zero-sum game level. Oh, it's a zero-sum game. Why are you afraid to call it that? It's a full-on <laughs> zero-sum game. Oh, man. So what, if you're playing... And there, there's less, that's the other thing, too. I mean, right now, the market is so inundated. Why? Because, you know, it's not just that Eckhart Tolle is out there putting information, you know, out on social media. It's that so is Debbie from Wisconsin, who's decided she's got something important to say. Mm -hmm. So... Right now, it's like everyone can be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to post quotes. Mm -hmm. Everyone, right? So, like, what people have to understand is they're going into a market that is so saturated. I mean, so saturated that even the best people at the very top are, like, constantly on a treadmill trying to figure out how to stay in front of people. Um, what you are competing over is human attention. That's where money flows now. And that's what's important, even if, let's say, the money was not a part of this. You know, if I'm wanting to get my message out to it is most the most amount of people in the world, I'm still competing for attention. Right. I'm competing with cat videos. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. So it is it is a violent, competitive space in the olden days. People who were in this type of a field, part of how they kept their excellence was that they they did these time periods where they disappear. Mm. Try that nowadays. You were forgotten that fast. That's it. Mm. So. It's like it feels like you're on a rat wheel on a level that has never it's never been like that. And to be honest with you, it's not conducive with with the people who are truly good at their work in this field. They don't even tend to fall into that personality spectrum. I mean, I like to kind of it's the truth. I'm actually at a huge advantage here than the majority of people in this field, because the majority of people who are truly excellent at, you know, a lot of the spiritual stuff, they don't have my personality. Mm. They like they need a lot of, you know, downtime. They're very, you know, calm people. They like to be in nature. You know, there's a lot of musings. They don't tend to be very driven. Right. You know, I'm coming at this from this intense focus on mastery. I've got the personality of a professional athlete like I this the way it is has been so much more in my favor, honestly, as a person. But even I'm struggling. I would love to hear about how. If you could wave that magic wand and see this space operate outside of a zero sum game and be like, because we're, it's, it annoys me. We're on the same mission. At least it seems to be that we're, we're seeing problems. We want to fix them. What would that, eh, is it possible to get there or not is not the question, but what would you wish you would have seen when you got into the space where you're rubbing elbows with everybody who's at the top of their game and being shocked? And it's not this, what would you have wanted it to be? I wish that it would feel more like a team. You know, I, it, I, I mean, this is going to sound really dorky, but I very much wanted it to feel like um, Star Trek, where you've got the Starship Enterprise and like you've got these different experts and each of them has this, their own kind of flavor. You know how it was? They've each got their own excellence. They've each got their own flavor. And like together, it's like, da, 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 da you know? Um, that was definitely how it was pitched to me in the beginning, how it was going to be. And it turned out to be exactly the opposite. What I get annoyed the most, uh, and this is outside of spirituality, it's actually in the like entrepreneurship education space. It's, and it's the same, you know, um, everybody wants to be, uh, what's the name of the captain in, in Star Trek? Uh, Jean-Luc Picard. Jean-Luc Picard. And actually that's very interesting that I said that because there's a lot of different captains of different enterprises, depending on the series okay. you watch, but that's kind of the fragmentation I see in that world as well. It's like everybody wants, like, I'll play the role. It's, I want to raise human consciousness or I want to help entrepreneurs, but you have to be on my platform. 
And I understand why, because from a business perspective, like you need to acquire the users. And like, I, I understand this, but that's my biggest pet peeve is just because I, because I've, I've worked for so many different organizations. I'm like, I'm always trying to bridge, build bridges and see how can, I think it was a David Logan wrote a book. It was called uh, Tribes. And they speak about level five tribes, which is like, nobody's competing. Everyone's aligned against the problem. And I don't see it in this field yet. I don't know. Are there steps we can take to heal this in some ways? Because I do find that that's a big leverage point. Right now, I, I'm just on this kick of finding win-wins with people, basically. E. More and more and more and more and more. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know where else to go except for that. I mean, I, it would make me happier if we could find a way, honestly, to go to create like a, what do you call them? They call them expos, I think it is, where you like mm -hmm. put a whole bunch of speakers together. I wish that somebody would have a way of creating expos where, where as a speaker, we weren't competing with each other because the actual current model for expos is that you know who you're going to invite next year based off of pitting the best people against each other and then seeing who they're going to go to, how who people are going to go to. So it already sets up like, a, you know, the companies themselves are doing this amongst the speakers. It sets up a, well, it's you or me, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be me <laughs> type of dynamic. I, I just, I remember like a lot of these expos when I used to go to a lot more of them rather than doing my own events, I would, it would make me really sad, you know, that they would they'd have like a category of esoteric speakers where they're all teaching things about like opening your um, intuition and you know, how to, I don't know, receive medium information, stuff like that, like really proper esoteric stuff. And they would literally schedule them all at the same time. Mm. Like, what are you doing? Like, we... I like that model a lot too. I like, and it, but there's also, I, you, there's always an entity that has, that'll be the person of the expo. And there's almost, that's where I get really excited about some of the cool technologies that's coming when they talk about like decentralization and these concepts where there's zero ownership. Um, and I think that's one of the coolest things, like imagine having an expo, but it's not, it's either not owned by anyone or owned by everyone in some capacity. I feel like that's kind of a, that could be the kind of project I, I would want to maybe see. And that's giving me some ideas for the notebook as well. That would be entertaining. I would show up to see what the hell that looked like. Hmm. Noted. Um, I like to close loops and there's an open loop I've kept from the beginning. Um, and this was the fact that you shared the beginning working one-on-one, -on -one. you got, you saw this platform, you kind of saw, okay, there's, there's value for me to kind of put this, but then the same way that you watch these documentary films starts with people in the garage, they figure it out. They meet maybe an investor or some, there's a, there's an aha. And then it's like, and yeah, then I heard a bunch of people, I grew so quick and everything changed. It was super fast. And it's like, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean it was super fast? Like what were some of the things that happened there? And can it can so we break that one thing. down yeah, a let's, little more? Let's break it down. So we put things out on YouTube. We start to get invitations everywhere. So we have the first outside of where I lived um, speak speaking engagement to go to. I was in actually Houston, Texas. So I fly to Houston, Texas. I will never forget the day. The first day that I had to say, goodbye for a period of time, just like a few days. It was really, you know, nothing. But those of you who are parents know what that feels like. Um, I had to say goodbye to my little three-year-old son at that time for the first, you know, multiple night overnight trip to go down there and teach. And I, I was awake at nighttime crying my eyes out because of realizing that this career was going to, in a certain way, take me away from that experience with my son. And I was a stay-at-home mom until that point. So I was like inviting people into my home to you know, explain the things that I was doing while my son was on a nap time or playing with his dad. So that was a really, it was immediately, that's it. You know, how much are you willing to dedicate to this? Because like, he had no problem. It's not like he was crying in it or anything, but like, I, you know, I still have the image of his, this like little three-year-old just like waving to me at the airport. And it was just like, I'm going to die. Yeah. I remember feeling that way. And then it was, but it was like this juxtaposition between, you know, me getting up there to speak to the people. And it was literally like the hours become minutes. There's nothing that exists outside of that moment. And it's like, it's just happening through me. And I've, I've heard definitely like talk to people like really, really famous musicians and things say the same thing about their craft. It just feels like it's being done through them. They're not even in control. And that's how it always felt from the beginning. And it was, it was like, a, there is no other life for you. So that was the first step. Then I flew back home. Then, you know, we started, it started getting to the point where we're overwhelmed with the amount of 
you know, things we need to be doing, whether it's improvements on camera equipment. Now, we don't understand enough about camera equipment. We've got to hire somebody who understands the kind of stuff. Or, wait a minute, we should probably start an actual company. How do you, how do you start a company, you know? Well, you first need to get articles of incorporation. Okay, so, like, you make your first appointment to go into an office with a bunch of lawyers and, like, you know, write the articles of incorporation. And then, you know, at that point, you're making decisions that you're so unqualified to make. Like, who do you want? Who do you want to have on this paper? And you're like, I don't know, like, what's best? You know? yeah. <laughs> um, and there's so many mistakes made at that. God, the amount of mistakes we made at the, during that time period that I suffered from later. And that's the scary thing about starting a business. It's just like you can't know it all. You can hope that you have somebody that's like so great at walking you through the whole damn thing. But who do you know that is so great at having somebody walk them through the whole damn thing? Usually it's like, damn it, you know, about something you did years ago that you, if you would have known better. Yes. And then it was, well, we have so, we're so overwhelmed. We, did, we can't even manage a personal life. So like we need to m move more people into our sphere that are able to take care of some of those things. You know, the first time I ever hired somebody to clean my house, so I wasn't doing it. It was like. I just became that person. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I, did, I didn't understand it at first. I have to tell you because it'll be interesting for people. I, I was raised by two people who really, honestly, they went against wealth. Like they really have a problem with like the one percenters and stuff like that. So I was raised with this attitude of like the people who have cleaners who clean their house are like really messed up people. And it's all about status and like why should why should that person from Mexico clean your house as opposed to you yourself? Right. So there's very much like this judgment around it that I definitely I carried it with me, even if it wasn't even like I consciously looked at it. But I felt I remember feeling so guilty about it. And it took, you know, a, another business expert to sit me down and be like, listen to me, you can stop doing this and delegate it. Why? Because this world is going to benefit way more by you focusing on your craft than by you cleaning your house, Teal. And it was th at that moment, I'm like, oh, wait, you're right. If I'm cleaning my house, then I'm not creating more content. And that was what, you know, enabled me to break through there. Okay, so now we've got, you know, people who are coming on to the business or doing that. And then it's like you have to hire your first personal assistant. That was the first position I ever hired for. And it's like, it's really awkward. It's like all of a sudden you've got this person there and you're like having to delegate stuff. It's like I, I had plenty to delegate, but I just remember being like, this is very different you know and then one employee turns to two turns to three turns to four turns to five turns to we need to hire a company that's not even here now you know we get to the point where it's like i haven't half the people that work for me i've never met before they live in other countries and you know they're doing whatever they're doing you know with customer service or things like that it i feel like my it's my personality is bent for this but it definitely you know when i'm looking back on it especially because like but when you're there it feels like it's overwhelming but you're just putting one foot in front of the other you look back and you're like you know, it's like when you take a plane off and you're like, uh, 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 like you know, one of those. There's a, wow, it's that, that's so fun to witness. I don't think most people get to have that granular level of detail. So I'm glad you expanded because yeah, that's the journey that most people don't see. Oh yeah, hell no. Like when you go from, I remember this, when I first started my videos, I used to hang up a sheet because I had murals on every wall to the beginning the beginning of the career, I was like, this is, they're going to be paying attention to that instead of me. So let's hang a sheet. Okay. So I'm literally standing there in front of this terrible, I'm talking, it was such bad quality camcorder, like in front of a sheet I hung talking. And then like the, I remember the feeling of the first time you buy a green screen and you unroll it and you're like, it's so weird. Woo. You're like doing weird stuff in front of it. Like, it's so cool. You can put this on a computer program and now I can be standing anywhere, you know? And then you're like, this, you're like so into it. And then everybody in the main, you know, in the mainstream is like, this sucks now. People in the in the new, um, especially the younger generations, hate fake backgrounds. So it's like you roll the green screen up and you're like, but I'm from the 80s. That is so cool. You know, and then you're like, OK, I have to come up with something normal. It's just constant adjustment. I, I can't help but uh, do a callback to a, a program I went through and I, I thought the insights were so good and I think are so relevant to how ready you are and in a state to be able to handle this, which is, um, is Stephen Cawther wrote a book um, and, and he, he he did a program which is about the habit of ferocity, like how to how to actually get in a place that once you get access to flow states, you don't crumble. 
And it's the fact that when you get into flow states, things start coming your way so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ass kicking never stops. Yep. And what you're talking about here and you're showing us in real time is the fact that at every stage, there's a new ass kicking. Oh, yeah. And what I've noticed, and I guess that kind of wraps into that level of why intensity seems to be a really good value to have and a personality trait to have, is because you always have to get back up and be like, all right, bring it on. And to me, I want to kind of wrap this to the fact that when you are going out there, and I remember these are conversations that were very powerful for me when we started to know where your heart's at and why you're doing this. Because for a lot of moments and a lot of things that you went through, most people would just be like, hey, why don't we just stop? Oh, for sure. And I'm sure that's no, uh, no, no, this is the other thing you got to know. They will. That's what I was not prepared for at all. I didn't realize the amount of pressure that would be put on the people around me. And when you involve fame, that just, you can go ahead and times that by a thousand. The level of pressure as you're rising towards more success or bigness is so extreme that the majority of people aren't actually conducive to it. So there starts to be this spot where you, it's almost, it, the feeling, and it's got an image with it for me. The feeling is like, I see myself as this very large eagle that's literally flying towards the sun. And I'm going to an altitude that's so extreme that it's like I'm watching the people that I love. Let's pretend there are other birds next to me just, and like fall. And so it's like everyone around me starting to struggle. And it's very few people that are okay and functional at that altitude. And then it's like all of a sudden you become extremely lonely because there may be a lot of people who are wanting to add to your life and add to your mission, especially in this line of work. It's about mission, right? But they can't do it at that level of pressure. And so all of a sudden you have to put them in a place where they can still contribute, but in a way that they're not dying as a result of it. And it is one of the most isolating experiences. People, when they're consistently met with those challenges, not everyone's going to make it through. That's, I think, something that nobody gets. And there very much is this feeling of, do I, am I going to pick the people in my life, like closeness to the degree and in the way that I want it with people in my life, or am I going to pick success? It's very understated how... How it's actually something to really consider when you're on this path. It is. Because, again, we we, we joked about it a couple of times. Gum, gumdrops, rainbows, there's there's a lot of intensity. And you keeping yourself continuing to rise. And you've shared me some of your mission. And actually, what you all might not know is we're actually getting into a strategy session where we're talking about future phones and everything. Mm-hmm. They're big. There's a big mission. And I understand why you're doing it because there's a lot of things that need to be done how often do you go back to that purpose and that reason for doing what you're doing to keep yourself motivated every single day every single day and i've got people around me who keep bringing me back there because yeah you will line up with challenges on the level where it's really not worth it honestly you know, it's, what's interesting is like to get myself through this, and I, I don't know whether this would work for everybody in every business, but I, I feel like if you have a real strong sense of purpose with whatever you're doing for a job, this one definitely works is to imagine that you're dead. I spent a lot of my time sort of living through the lens of, okay, you died, Teal. How do you feel about the decision that you're up against right now? Okay, you died, Teal. Like, are you happy you quit? Okay, you died, Teal. It's almost like looking at it from that lens is really the only thing I've found personally that works for the type of challenges that that I'm facing at the level that I'm at right now. But it's a really powerful exercise because I feel like what it does is it crystallizes what matters most to you. So if you're living according to or making decisions in your business according to like what matters most to you, you're going to be satisfied with your decision even if you make mistakes. You see people, and in this field I've seen speakers that what got them into that space of speaking and wanting to build this business is a near-death experience. Yeah. Because it kind of crystallizes this like, oh yeah, everything else doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and I think you have exercise and meditations that kind of walk you through this type of process, yeah. right? Yeah, I feel like it's something that is so beneficial for people. I know that death makes people nervous, but we are all going to die in this lifetime. And really it's about what are you going to do with your time here on earth? And I feel like looking at your life from the perspective of, you know, imagining having died, it makes you live the most and live the richest and live the fullest. I'm going to be putting a link for everybody here. Uh, there's an Ask the episode you did recently about death. And I think that, you know, 
putting into perspective our mortality, thinking about it, not denying its eventuality, I think causes a lot of the dysfunction because you've, I'll put it in the box there, no, I'll live forever. And it's like, you know, even me for like, I, I'm, I haven't had any near death experiences, but I think about how, you know, I've had a family member that got uh, an illness was a little heart condition and how it got me to like, really start thinking like, oh my God, like, maybe I want to be closer to home because you know, without thinking about it, I'm thinking, oh yeah, they'll be there forever, but it's, it's not the case. And so. It'll help you take risks too, which are, which is necessary for entrepreneurs. Hmm. This is probably another one of these things I've noticed for a lot of the people that I've worked with is what they're looking for is like, Jason, tell me how I can become more, like get more money, more success, more attraction, people to listen to my message, but give me the way that has zero risk. Mm -mm. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't exist. Yeah. Teal, I'm so happy that I get to have conversations with you. Um, it's a privilege to be in your home, uh, to be able to shoot this. And there's so much that we covered here, but I really wanted to open up this space to be able to have people have that that lens of like, what is the path they're even choosing? Because especially if you're in this space and you're coming from a place that someone told you, you should go into this industry because it's going to be all sunshines and rainbows. There's a bit of a sobering to have. There's a bit of a discovery of what necessary traits and attitudes you need to have to be understanding what path that you're on so that if you're going there, you kind of sign up for it and you know what's coming. Oh yeah. I know you talked a lot about, you know, for the mission of raising consciousness, because you are looking to see partners, allies, and build a team. What is some of the worst, the words that you would share for people um, that they're about to say, yeah, I'm signing up for this. What would be kind of the, the message you would give for these people? I want to, I want to make a, it's almost like I want to say that I want to build a house, not literally, but metaphorically. I want to build a house and I want each element of that house to contain elements of the excellence that belong to each one of us. I know that this universe is not redundant. So if people are out there sort of worrying that there's all this crossover, I'd say from a universal perspective, you might be surprised. I would wish that that each person chooses like truly what they think they are the most excellent at when compared to everybody else in the field, especially. And to offer that within this context, I mean, they can do whatever else they want with the rest of it. But I've come to my own realization as well about trying to tap into my excellence, which has actually moved me away from working with individuals because I found myself when I work with organizations that have existing ecosystems, I have a lot more joy. I get to make a bigger difference. I'm more energized. I get to tap into these flow states a lot easier. And I think, you know, being giving a dose of truth like we had today can get people perhaps as the year wraps up and we release this episode is a good time to put things into question. Mm -hmm. And so I'll wrap it up here, Teal. Honestly, it's so fun to have a conversation with you. Thank you so much. For everybody tuning in, sit with the content that we just went through today. Uh, a fascinating conversation. If you're not already aware of Teal Swan, my God, tealswan.com, have a look at all the amazing programs. I've been involved with her team about five, six months now. And we've been working on some amazing projects to really work on the mission and reduce some of these resistances and struggles and really make this as as best growth path as possible by bringing my level of excellence, but the get chance of working with you, what you do in your craft, which I've witnessed, and how much you genuinely care about the people is what I got to witness and your patience with people and your perseverance through the struggles. And I know we haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg of the things that I know you did go through, but thank you keep going and thank you for sharing with everybody in my community it's good to be here thank you thank you so much for listening to the selling with love podcast we have some previous episodes you can tune into right here and if you prefer the short form content where you get to the point in under 10 minutes we do have a ton of clips from our best episodes that are being shared on this channel as well so pick which one supports you the most and of course thank you for liking subscribing and of course selling with love